So today's video is going to be a little bit different than my normal videos. Okay, cool. What's different about it? Well, normally I would just discuss one subject and I would stay mm -hmm. on that subject. Yeah. But this one, I've created more of a 15 bulletin points. 15? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I think something is there for everybody, you know. Okay. So I've created a little ding sound to show when I change. Okay, that's good, yeah. You know, yeah, let's see if it works anyway. Hello people and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time on the channel, a special welcome to you. I ask that you check out the rest of my videos. If you like what you see, give them a thumbs up, leave a comment, but more than anything, I'm asking that you subscribe to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Jamaicans, my culture, my nationality. Usually on my channel I'm talking about a particular subject that's actually in the media or something that Jamaicans are questionary about. But today I'm pretty much kind of putting like all politics to the side and I'm discussing Jamaicans. This video was actually inspired by commentaries made on my channel in particularly my last video and for that reason I decided you know what let me do a video about Jamaicans and people I'm about to criticize my own culture I'm about to criticize Jamaicans but at the same time my criticism is with hopes to open eyes and hopes for betterment I'm not here to just throw shade on my nationality without any positive gain out of it or without my nationality or the country that I'm from having any real benefits to it so bear with me as I go through this you know what I mean I'm an author I'm a writer and I'm a critic you know this is what I do my recent videos and other videos that I've published on my channel have exposed what what I call Jamaica most crippling factor. Jamaica most crippling factor to me is ignorance. I'm not talking about people who can't just read and write or don't know um, how to spell their name and so on and so forth. I'm talking about ignorance to the fullest definition of its meaning. I mean, my recent video was about a third airport in Jamaica. A lot of comments came out in that video and as usual guys, you know that I appreciate all comments whether those comments are in agreement or disagreement with me i mean some comments were in agreement with me some comments were in disagreement with me some comments had reasons why they were in agreement with me and some comments even had added suggestions to why they were in agreement or disagreement with me for the ones who didn't disagree or didn't agree or probably didn't understand the subject at hand. They just thought that it was necessary to hurl profanity and insults over the channel. I mean, and for that reason, I decided, you know what, let me tackle that because that is actually a plague in my nation, that ignorance, you know. I understand that everybody nowadays has a cell phone and everybody has a YouTube account, but having a cell phone, having a YouTube account, it shouldn't just be reason enough to listen to other people's comments and listen to other people's videos or topic and just think to yourself that, you know what, I've got a cell phone, I've got the possibility and the platform to comment. So even though I don't know what they're talking about, let me just hurl some insult and hurl some profanity over their channel. There was also some comments, you know, like I say, you know, I'm criticizing the comments, but it doesn't mean that I don't respect the comment. There was a few comments that despite me asking people to not be selfish in their answer, there were some people that was pretty much saying that the reason why they would like an airport in Mandeville is because it would benefit them personally. There you go. While I'm at that subject, let me just say big shout out and big thanks to the people who corrected me about the Ian Fleming's airport in St. Mary, which I forgot to mention in my video. I totally forgot that there was an airport in Boscobel, I believe, St. Mary near Oteria, somewhere down there. So an airport in Mandeville would actually be a fourth airport, not third airport so yeah i really appreciate that people i've traveled wide and i've traveled far 
So I've met a lot of people in this world. I've interacted with a lot of different cultures. And it is a shame that my conclusion still remains that my own people, Jamaican people, are the most ignorant and illiterate people that I've ever had to encounter. And when I say that, what I mean by that is in no real disrespectful way, I'm just trying to keep it as real as possible. I mean, Jamaicans are the only people that I've come across that appears to lack the ability to disagree respectfully. Jamaicans are the only people that I know that if you think something is red and they think something is blue, it's not enough to disagree that your belief it's different color. Jamaicans will take it to the level of, there has to be a level of hostility, there has to be some argument, it could lead to a fight, it could lead to malice, and in some cases it could lead to worse. And for that reason, I define my own people as being dark and illiterate. You know, Jamaican people know what, we mean, what I mean when I say dark. I recently posted on my Instagram one of my quote that I wrote and that quote says communication establishes understanding but even though one is communicating the only way someone can acquire understanding is if that person is being submissive you have to kind of like give the person who is speaking the benefit of a doubt pretty much I'm saying give it to the listening ear there's an old saying that says listen to even a fool when he speaks because the minute you stop listening that person who you perceive as a fool could actually make sense so if we apply ourselves to those proverbs if we apply ourselves to those wise teaching we wouldn't come to any conclusion until we hear what he or she has to say in entirety and give it a fair personal reasoning a Jamaican young man recently reached out to me by the name of Adrian Smith Adrian if you're listening big up yourself Adrian Smith is a young Jamaican living in Jamaica who has shown me some concern and worries to the future of Jamaica and his worries and concern was enough for me to applaud him because as young as he is he expressed to me that his worries and fear is about Jamaica's stagnant growth and his concern about the ignorance of the people where the young ones are not embracing intelligence or worldly knowledge and the older ones are still living with their old mentality of chasing beyond politics and believing in politicians and their politics. So it did please me to see someone as young as Adrian to be concerned about Jamaica's growth and that is the kind of attitude I personally would like to see become widespread among the, 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 the leaders of tomorrow, the young adults of today, you know I'm talking about those who are in college, university or those who are not in college and university but are of that age. Someone recently commented on my video that I posted a couple weeks ago that's titled banned and deported from the US. And this person made a comment with some sarcasm and I believe the comment was something along the lines of I must enjoy my long vacation in Jamaica and I replied to that comment by saying enjoy my long vacation in Jamaica I don't see what would be wrong with that I mean after all Jamaica is one of those countries that most people worldwide are dreaming of or wish they could ever go there for a vacation and here I am being a national of that country so I pretty much was expressing that I don't see the problem if I have to go to Jamaica and stay there forever after all that's where I'm from and that comment actually gave me reasons to, to, to bring it on my channel to show my subscribers and my viewers how I feel about Jamaica and living in Jamaica. People, at the end of the day, Jamaica is home. It's the only place on earth that I have a legal birthright. It's the only place on earth that I have a right to be. Any other country that I've lived in, any other country, any other status that countries have given me, it is a privilege. And I am quite aware that there are privileges that can be revoked. So even if you live in Canada or America or the UK and you got what they call 
naturalized citizenship. Don't get too comfortable with that because technically that can be revoked. Jamaica is the only country that you have a birthright that unless you do something ridiculous, the government of Jamaica may force you to seek exile out of Jamaica. But other than that, Jamaica is home people. It continues to puzzle me how Jamaican see deportation as condemnation. I can understand that. While the rest of the world, especially when it comes to Caucasian nation, when they get deported from one country to another, they just kind of get on with life. Jamaicans are the only people that I know that treat deportees as if they were kicked out of heaven and back to their birthright land which is pretty much the pits of hell. I, I, I don't get that. At the end of the day, the way I see deportation is like this. Deportation is nothing more than an administration process. Foreign or migration to foreign is no different than having a job. So deportation is no different than a person being fired from a job. So you go to this country, you sign a contract, there are rules, there are regulations according to the country, you broke a rule, you violated the, the contract of the rule, so they kicked you out. Kind of like the same. If you go to a job, you sign a contract, if the job believes that you've broken the rule, whether you broke the rule or not, if they come to a conclusion that you broke the rule, they fired you. What you're gonna do after that? You have no other choice than to move on with your life. You can stay unemployed if you like, or you can find another job. And pretty much that is what I'm saying to people who have been deported to Jamaica or deported to anywhere else in the world. If you have been deported from the United States of America, England or Canada, get on with your life. Find another country if you don't like the country that you have or stay in your own country. Some people have this picture of Jamaica and Jamaicans that for tourists, Jamaica is white sand beaches and sunshine. And for Jamaicans, Jamaica is zinc fence, broken home, starvation, and hunger. I don't know where they get this perspective from. Then again, I do know because Jamaicans, we are such a beggy, beggy race. We always begging people things. We always selling sob story to people as if, you know what, we are the worst on planet Earth and we're suffering and we're starving and we want all opportunities to go to foreign. When I went to Jamaica in 1997, I left the United States of America on my very own. Voluntarily left the United States of America after living there as a permanent resident. I moved to Jamaica and I lived in Kingston. You call that St. Andrew. I lived in Upper Meadowbrook. I think it was called Meadowbrook Heights. From my veranda, I could actually see all the way into Portmore or over by the wharf. So for all you guys who know Kingston or know St. Andrew, to get to where I live, you'd have to drive all the way up Manning's Hill Road head down into Meadowbrook and then work your way up on the hill. My neighbor was actually Mike McCollum. So if any of you guys know Mike McCollum, yeah, my neighbor was Mike McCollum. My house was behind his. But while I was living in Jamaica after leaving the United States of America, did I feel like I took a great loss? Mm, no, not really. But um, considering that I've lived in the United States of America so long, coming back to Jamaica, I did suffer the passage of readjusting to the Jamaican system all over again. I think the only thing I hated about Jamaica at that time compared to the United States of America is pretty much what everybody who's lived in England, Canada or the United States of America hates about Jamaica. And that when it comes to administration, when it comes to business, Jamaica moves at a snail's pace. You know, so after living in other countries, where business at the bank goes like this or business with other businesses goes like this when it comes to Jamaica that readjustment was actually a pain and it took a while for me to mentally accept that this was my reality another thing that I hated about Jamaica when I lived there versus living in the United States of America 
in the United States of America and in the United Kingdom where I've lived, when it comes to contract, when it comes to words in a paper where people sign and agreed, those words are respected. And when I lived in Jamaica, I hated the fact that contracts meant very little. Jamaicans have no respect for written contracts and they are tidy. You know how that is when, when it comes to Jamaica. But outside of that, um, did I feel like I was in the pits of hell? No, my life, in my life in Jamaica was actually way more comfortable than my life was in America. Granted, foreign, some foreign has more opportunity than Jamaican does. And Jamaicans only want to go to foreign because they're ambitious. They want to go there, make that money, um, some wants to stay in foreign. The rest of them wants to actually go back to Jamaica, build their house, and then get on with daily life in Jamaica. So most Jamaicans really, their heart is in Jamaica. It's just that the politics and the outreach of international arms are making it impossible for some Jamaicans to return home and live in their native land. My Jamaican people need to just open up their mind, get themselves out of that tunnel vision where they have it that foreign is the best place. Another thing that I want to address before I sign off today is a comment that was made on the same video that I last posted where uh, a Jamaican individual who was living in Jamaica actually made a comment against Jamaicans living abroad and I said I thought to myself there we go again Jamaicans you know they will create a rivalry out of nothing you know if they can if they can't get anybody to feud with they will feud with their own because here was this person that was criticizing Jamaicans living abroad versus Jamaicans living in Jamaica and I had to challenge this individual and ask him or her if Jamaicans living in Jamaica were more Jamaican than Jamaicans living abroad and that individual actually answered yes <laughs> I don't know how Oh, they figured that out but I'll leave that one alone people. Then there are politicians in Jamaica. As much as I didn't want to address politics today I still had to just browse over it. There are politicians in Jamaica that most Jamaicans doesn't even know how they got into office in the first place. Jamaican people I want y'all to start reading. Reading it's such a powerful thing when you discover knowledge when you discover your own rights to your country. So pretty much I'm saying I want Jamaican people to invest their time into the rules and regulation that surrounds the Jamaican government and find out what are your powers as a citizen of Jamaica. Because there are politicians in power in Jamaica or in parliament or holding big offices and getting big paychecks at Jamaican worship with godly respect and they don't even even know how these people got into power. You see, ignorance is crippling, but fear, fear is worse than ignorance in my opinion. So what I'm trying to say to my Jamaican people is for them to lose that fear that they have, the fear of inquiring, the fear of finding out, the fear of researching, the fear of knowing what can you do for Jamaica. One of the comments that I read said the reason why they would like an airport in Mandeville is because they are afraid to travel to Kingston and they're afraid to travel to Montego Bay. I actually understand. I don't want to ridicule that, but I also thought it was funny because I would not continue to live in Jamaica if I'm afraid to move from one parish to another. I'm not being oblivious to the violence that's across the island of Jamaica. So I'm not saying I'll just be an idiot and just go wherever I like to, to go in Jamaica and then get myself killed or get myself hurt. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if I live in Jamaica and I'm in that much fear that I, I'm afraid to leave from my parish to travel to where the airports are just to leave the country, that is something I would have to tackle. That is something I would have to confront the government with. I would have to go around my neighborhood, create a petition, get, get as much people as possible that could sign that petition and send it off to the government. You, know, you might be wondering what kind of petition I'm talking about. Whatever it is that you're afraid of, you petition your government to create 
anything that you deem could be a solution to that particular problem. This is ridiculous what I'm about to say, but I'm just using it as, a, as an example. If you want to petition the government that they should line the passageway from your country all the way to the international airport with police, then as a citizen of the country, you petition and you ask for that. Or you petition and you show them that you've got concerns that you're afraid to be in your country because no real government that love their citizens or love the people would tolerate the fact that its citizens are living in fear. So don't think what I just said is literally about petition government for lining the passageway from your parish to the airport it's foolish you know but I'm just saying in Jamaica they've got SOE at the moment if you believe that the SOE works then you petition your government and you said I need more SOE because when I'm leaving from my house going to the airport it makes me feel safer that's what I mean by that your government works for you people not necessarily the other way around where the Jamaican people work for the government. Jamaica is democracy. It's not a dictatorship. So people of Jamaica has powers. All they have to do is read. Get your hand on the Jamaican constitution. Know your rights. Share the knowledge of your discovered rights to your family, friends, work colleagues, and strengthen the nation to have an independent voice. Strengthen the nation to be the ruling government. The government body is pretty much a tool that can be used by the people if they actually know how to use it. Of course, keeping it real and in reality, we know that Jamaican government to an extent are puppets that are being controlled by puppeteers. And as discriminative as that sound, there is so much truth to it. There is so much influence, outside influence that's control in Jamaica at the moment. It is a shame and that's why for people such as Adrian Smith, he can understand why the years are moving on but Jamaica seem to just be standing still. Some people are saying instead of an airport in Mandeville, Jamaica should invest in a hospital. They need beds, they need equipment and so on. The Jamaican government knows this, but their outside influences people that are making sure that the Jamaican people are not that comfortable at home and they will forever want to go to foreign. Here's the thing, Jamaica is in debt to a lot of people. And as long as any one country or person are in debt to others, they're never independent. Anyway, people, that's pretty much it for today's video. But before I go, I have to big up some people. The first person I want to big up today is a subscriber by the name of Michael Cole. I also want to big up his wife, which is Sylvia Cole. She actually doesn't speak English, so for that reason, I'm leaving the name on the screen a little longer than I normally would. I also want to big up Damien Gordon. And last but not least, I want to big up a subscriber by the name of Naz Drew. Okay, people, I await your comments on this one. It is a little different from the other vlogs that I normally do, but I'm sure my next vlog I'll get back to business as usual. As you know on my channel, I welcome thumbs up, thumbs down, agreement, disagreement, and I appreciate your comments, guys, because what? Each one, teach one. Until next time, people. Peace.